Howdy again. It's Tubal Kane, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back. This is part two of a multi-part video where I am constructing or building or fabricating this little wobbler type of steam engine. Now, I have called this the mayonnaise jar engine. I probably will continue to do that, but I'm wondering who actually designed this. Was it uh, the man that... Uh, made this at the auction or did he get the blueprint someplace is it possibly one of the elmer's engines designs i think there's 25 or 50 of those little engines if anybody recognizes this design as being one of elmer's please put it in the comment i would be interested in knowing about the design remember it's a quarter inch bore and three eighths of an inch a stroke so it's quite a small engine with a one inch flywheel and in part one I can I made the, the, the brass flywheel that's really pretty much all I did in that video so let's move on to the next step where I'm gonna make the base and that will be a piece of magnesium one and three eighths by one and three eighths and I from this slab of magnesium I've cut out a piece. It's just rough cut. It's not square. So the first thing we'll do here is to square this up and take it down to about inch and a half. And you can use aluminum, wood, steel, whatever you would want for your base. It doesn't have to be magnesium. Over at the Bridgeport Mill, here is the slug of magnesium. Now this is rough sawn on all four sides. There are no true edges, so just going to set that edge. I've taken the burrs off, tighten it down in the vise, and we'll take a light cut over it. I now have one true surface here with a little X on it, and using the uh, cute little bar Z square, and there's no chips in there. I'm just setting the true side up against the square, tightening it down, and I'm ready to mill this side, just enough to clean it up. Now we'll take it over to the bench and get some layout lines on it. Okay, this is the original engine. This is the prototype. The base on this original is aluminum, and it's about 5 16 thick. I'm using 3 8 because that's what I happen to have. It really doesn't matter too much. So I put a layout die on this piece, and the, a true edge is down. I'm holding this against an angle plate, and... The height gauge, get yourself a height gauge if you don't have one. They are the handiest thing. One and three eighths. And then the other true edge down. One and three eighths. Back to the mill. And I will mill two of the lines. I'll just show one of those. It's kind of a repeat. All right, this is side three. And I will mill it down to the line. Good. That's side three about down to the line. Maybe one more light cut off camera and I'll do side four or edge four off camera. Next, I need to drill a hole through the base right in the center. And that can be found two different ways by the diagonal method with a layout. Or since I've already got layout die on here, I've set the height gauge for I believe it was 0.687, that's half. And we'll just strike it here in two places and that will give us the center. I'll center punch it. Now I'm gonna use 632 screws. Where are they? I already lost them. Flathead cap screws. So that's just a clearance hole, and then I need to countersink it because these are flatheads. This is too short. This is too long. I got to cut them off. Cut the long ones off, that is.
Okay, there it is. Now, do you remember that magnesium is a metal that will actually burn, so there'll be a little extra credit playing with fire at the end of this video. At the high school, we used to melt a lot of aluminum, but sometimes magnesium would get mixed in, typically with chainsaw frames and Volkswagen Beetle engine jugs. And the, that would burn and uh, in the crucible, and the kids would love it. They'd throw it in the water, and it still wouldn't go out. But anyway... I'll dress this up just a little bit now on the abrasive sander. If you wanted to, you could bevel the corner or put a little cove around there, just all kinds of different treatments. I'm going to keep it simple. Okay, the flywheel is done. The base is done. It's all polished up as much as I intend to do on it. So why don't we make, why don't I make the main shaft and the crank disc next. Now the main shaft is just a piece of 3 16 round, so let me cut that off. I'll just rough cut it. It only needs to be inch and a quarter. It doesn't matter if a little sticks out. I like that better than the original where it's flush, but you can suit yourself. Now the crank pin itself is 5 8 stock steel. So I'm going to take this over to the lathe, face it off, center drill it, drill it one size under 3 16 and then ream it 3 16 and then cut it off with the cutoff tool. All right, let's start by facing it off. And now I will cut it off and make it one fourth inch long. Now the actual crank disc only needs to be about an eighth of an inch. That's a little bit under. It isn't critical. It does not matter. Well, why did I cut it off? Ooh, that's still, ooh, it's hot, hot, oh, gee. All right, you can see that I just cut this off at about quarter inch, extra thick. Now, I have a reason for doing that so that it will fit on the shaft without wobbling, and it will be true. You do it any way you want, but I found uh, earlier that putting a real thin disc on there was tricky, and it, it, I had run out on it. So what I'm doing here now, and that's still hot, off camera, everything rolls off the bench. Off camera, I will be using this Horror Freight Loctite, which I just bought for $3, and I did it on a sample, and it holds well. Even though it's blue, it's not red, but it said in the directions here that it's okay for bearing. So that, that's what I'm doing. So off camera... I will take a piece of the 3 16 rod like this, cut it off to, what did I say, one and a half, and I will Loctite onto this hot piece with the rough edge out. And then that has to set really overnight. According to the direction, it said 60 minutes for oh, fixture time and overnight, 24 hours for full strength. Well, it's not actually the next day. I remind myself of Martha Stewart. You know, she might be making up a big casserole or something, and she's got it all mixed up on the counter there, and then she'll whip the oven open behind her, and there is another casserole all ready to eat and pass around to the crew. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So this has set overnight. It is not the hot piece. <laughs> So I make extra. It takes a lot of extra time. Now I'm going to take this over again to the lathe and I will turn this down to just one eighth of an inch thick. 
like that. And it will run true. True as a die. And now I will face down the crank pin until it's one eighth inch thick. Well, that was a failure, as you saw in the last clip, as I took a, a cut to face this off, it slipped. That is, the uh, Loctite failed. The blue Loctite failed, probably for two reasons. First of all, this product really isn't made for press fits, although it said on the direction that it would work for bearings. That's why I used it. And I was trying to, to make available to you some rather cheap, thread lock but this is not the one to use and of course we're not locking a thread so actually today is the next day since i had that failure and so 24 hours ago i used a different kind of loctite i made two of these in case i have another failure and i have no idea what kind of loctite this is because you cannot read it i've had this for many years and there's only a little bit left but that has always served me well, even though it's probably well past its date. But anyway, that's enough talking about that. So I'll go back to the lathe and see if the Loctite holds. And again, I want to face this down so it's one eighth of an inch thick. Okay, let's give it another try. Notice that I'm using a different tool now, the diamond point tool. And furthermore, and I think that'll put less pressure on the work. And furthermore, I was also thinking that possibly I got this hot enough to where the Loctite failed, although it couldn't have been more than 200 degrees at the most, so that probably wasn't it. Much better, and that Loctite did indeed hold. And I'm wondering if the other Loctite failed because the workpiece got too hot, although I, I kind of doubt it. It wasn't all that hot, probably 150. But an alternate way of doing this, two alternate ways, one is to make it a press fit with interference of about a half a thousandth or so. And the other, and the way we did it at the high school is, and this is just a bolt here, but we took a shaft of uh, 3 sixteenths or whatever size it was, put just a couple threads on the end, and the crank disc was threaded and run all the way up to the shoulder and probably put a little Loctite on it, cut off the end and uh, cut off the head of the bolt, and you got your, your uh, crank pin that will never come off unless you run it in the wrong rotation that would cause it to spin off on you. The crank pin itself, which will be pressed or held in with Loctite into the crank disc here, that's 330 seconds. And I mentioned it before, but I'm actually using filler rod uh, for welding for that little pin. But I have laid out and center punched a hole there. I gotta cut my nails. One eighth of an inch from the edge and on center, I got a little bit of layout on there. It looks kind of sloppy, but now I'm going to drill that hole and I'm going to ream it too on, on top of it. <laughs> Very tiny reamer, where is it? Right here, 330 seconds. So I will drill one size under and ream that, and I'm going to use the little Cameron Precision Sensitive Drill Press for that purpose. Over at the Cameron Drill Press, one size under 330 seconds. Notice the setup here so that I do not drill into the vise, and I had to use a larger vise so that the shaft doesn't stick out the top. I'm ready to drill and then I will immediately ream 3.30 seconds. Okay, let's ream.
This is 330 seconds welding rod. And when you cut the real little pieces, use one of these cheap little hacksaws with the super fine blade. And it does an admirable job as opposed to trying to cut this some other way or with your Dremel tool would be fine. And then hold your little crank pin in a pin vise. Then you won't burn your fingers when you deburr or square off the end. Okay, the pin has been cut off and uh, chamfer a little bit and Loctite applied. That can set overnight, but I'm setting things aside now anyway as I make each piece. And you ought to have about 5 sixteenths of an inch of pin sticking out of the crank disc. So this piece is done now other than some curing and we'll move on to the next pieces. All right, this is the end of part two. And really when you get right down to it, all it did was make the base and the flywheel and the crankshaft and pin and all of that. And really the difficult parts are yet to come. So in the next part, part three, I will proceed to make the uh, column and then the cylinder and uh, so on. So this is going to be much more difficult than what I've done so far. So join me when available with part three. Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Hope you are enjoying the video and leave a comment. Okay, it's extra credit time. Let's have a little fun with fire. Everyone likes to play with fire. I hope I don't burn the house down. But again, this is a magnesium and it would take an awful lot of heat to get this started. Probably an oxyacetylene flame on a corner. An awful lot of heat. It isn't just going to happen by dropping uh, a marijuana cigarette on it. So I've taken... Uh, I tried sawing this, you know, and the shavings were a little bit too large to burn. So I took this double cut file and just made a, a bunch of shavings, real fine shavings, which I will drop into the flame. Now, I think most of you know that magnesium is used in signal flares and fireworks and, and so on because it is such an incredibly bright white flame. See if I can make this thing work. And I'm just going to sprinkle some of this and see if it shows up. Most of it will fall through the flame without burning. Not too impressive, is it? There, I had to get it closer to the cone. All right, that was not spectacular at all. Let me see if I can get a little piece of this started. See how bright that is? And it doesn't go out when you take it off of the, the flame. That's enough of that. Fortunately, I didn't start a fire yet. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration. If you like this kind of video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And be sure and watch the next part, which will be part three of the little mayonnaise engine being built. So long for now.